Today I'm going to walk you through a 504 refinance and some of the requirements that uh, might be applicable to what you're looking to do. We're seeing a big push to SBA 504s right now with conventional banks uh, not being able to lend the same kind of uh, loan to value, loan to cost as SBA. So SBA is, is everybody's busy in, in the space right now. It's a very valuable tool. There's a lots, lots of ways to structure it. Book a call below if you have any questions and we can get on a Zoom and discuss what you're looking to do and if a 504 or maybe a different product might be a better fit depending on the needs of your loan request. Welcome to the Investor Financing Podcast, where we interview real estate investors and lenders so you can learn all the secrets to getting your projects funded and scale your portfolio. And now, your host, Bo Eckstein. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Investor Financing Podcast. And today I'm going to walk you through a 504 refinance and some of the requirements that uh, might be applicable to what you're looking to do. Um, but essentially right now with rates being super low uh, for the 504, it might be advantageous to refinance um, if you have real estate or machinery. It's a great product. And uh, right now, for example, uh, for real estate related 504s, rates on a 25 year AM are around the 2.75% range fixed for 25 years. So really low cost of capital. We're seeing a big push to SBA 504s right now with conventional banks uh, not being able to lend the same kind of uh, loan to value, loan to cost as SBA. So SBA is, is everybody's busy in, in the space right now. But uh, it's a great time to look to see if we could do some debt consolidation um, to refinance and possibly have a 25 year AM, lengthen the, your amortization, increase your cash flows, maybe pay off a, a couple different loans that you have on your existing SBA 7A or 504. So there's lots of options. Hope you enjoy this uh, quick presentation on the 504 debt refinancing program. I look forward to seeing you. Please, please subscribe and like this helps me out in the, in the Google and YouTube world. And as always, appreciate you watching. All right, let's get started here on the Business Loan for Business Dreams 504 Debt Refinancing Program. All right, the 504 Debt Refinancing Program is structured like the traditional 504 loan program. A first lien from a private sector lender covering up to 50% of the project costs. And the private sector is typically a bank. There are some non-bank lenders that also participate in the 504 program. And then there's a second lien from a CDC, which is a certified development company, which is backed by the SBA guarantee. And this covers up to 40% of the project costs. The borrow, borrower will contribute at least 10%, on some cases a little bit more, if it's a startup or special purpose type building. There's different underwriting guidelines for that. Terms on second lien loans are 10, 20, or 25. Typically for machine equipment, that's a 10-year term versus 20 or 25 for real estate, Interest rates on a second lien loan are fixed when the debenture funds. So just to kind of elaborate on this, when um, once there's certific certificate of occupancy, that's when the actual um, CDC basically acquires the loan. So it's, there's like an interim loan and usually the senior lender funds the interim portion if it's a construction deal. So there's all different ways of structuring it. If it's a stabilized um, property, it, it happens pretty, pretty simultaneously versus a construction interim type deal. Terms for first lien loans are negotiated with lender, but must be 10 years on a, 
on a 20 and a 25 year debenture on a seven years on a 10 year debenture. All right. I know that's kind of confusing, but um, all the senior lenders, their terms are, they all differ. Some of them are straight variables. Some of them have a five or six year fixed window and then amortized uh, typically 25 years on real estate. Use of proceeds. Loan proceeds may be used to refinance existing commercial loans whose proceeds were used to acquire fixed assets eligible for the 504 loan program. In addition, proceeds may be used to pay business operating expenses, including salaries, utilities, and inventory that were incurred but not paid prior to the date of the application or that will become due for payment within 18 months after the date of application. Loan proceeds cannot be used for new expansion purposes such as equipment or real estate. We, we do have other programs that will fit the mold if you're looking to expand, it's just a different program. Qualified debt for refinancing, a commercial loan that was incurred for the benefit of the small business concern, not less than two years before the date of the application for refinance. The loan must not be guaranteed by a federal agency such as 7A Advantage, the 504 Grow or USDA loan. The loan proceeds must have been used substantially 85% to acquire eligible fixed assets on the time of original acquisition. The debt may consist of a combination of two or more loans provided that each of the loans satisfies the qualified debt requirements. Loan being refinanced must have been current for the past year with no payments being passed due for more than 30 days. You must provide a transcript to demonstrate compliance. The company must have been in business for two years prior to the date of application and there can, be, there can have been no change in ownership for at least two years. The borrower must currently occupy 51% of the building being refinanced. The loan must have a positive economic impact adhering to the 504 loan program, job creation, retention requirements. Loans that, are, loans that meet a community development or public policy goal do not have to meet the job creation requirement. In addition to that, if we go SBA 504 green, we don't have to, um, to reach, uh, meet those requirements either. So there's a couple ways to uh, work with the program. The maximum loan to value of the refinancing project allowed is 90%. If the debt being refinanced is more than 90% of the value of the eligible fixed asset, the borrower must provide additional cash or other fixed asset collateral acceptable to the SBA so as not to exceed 90% loan to value of the refinancing project. For projects that include financing business operating expenses, the maximum loan to value amount cannot exceed 85% and the business operating expenses portion of the loan may not exceed 25% of the value of the eligible fixed asset. Anyways, we touched on a bunch of things today regarding the 504 debt refinancing program. It's a very valuable tool. There's a lot, lots of ways to structure it. Book a call below if you have any questions and we can get on a Zoom and discuss what you're looking to do and if a 504 or maybe a different product might be a better fit depending on the needs of your loan request. At the end of the day, it doesn't cost any money to take a look and see if there's some options to consolidate debt, refinance at a better term, and uh, possibly extend the amortization of the loan increasing cash flow and so forth, putting you in a better financial position or putting your business in a better financial position. Once again, thank you for watching. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and uh, reach out if you have any questions with the calendar link below in the description. Have a great day and thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to the Investor Financing Podcast. For show notes and useful resources, please visit InvestorFinancingPodcast.com. For questions or comments, email info at InvestorFinancingPodcast.com. If you enjoy our show, please share it with your network. Until next time.